Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy and enthusiastic to be here. Um, my presentation it will be around um, uh, questions that we are addressing in Portugal. And I wanted to start to tell you how we get here. So how the black movement starts in Portugal, where we stand now and what our demands. So for starting uh, to think about black resistance, black organization, we must uh, go back to slavery because Portugal had this huge role in, uh, in slavery and, 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 and trafficking enslaved people around the world. So in Portugal in the 15th century, the, the black presence is very uh, old. It's multi-secular in Portugal. In the 15th century, 10% of the people that lived in Lisbon, the city where I live now, were black, black, black person. Some of them were enslaved ones. Another, some of them were free people that, uh, that to get their freedom, that could buy, bought their freedom, and others were merchants and people that were in uh, in trades uh, with Portugal. So this presence, it's very old. And in the beginning, the black people that were enslaved, they were organized in brotherhoods that uh, helped uh, each other to, to buy their freedom, to find a way of living after after uh, being uh, free so these uh, these brotherhood were very important for this process of freedom for the enslaved ones and we can find also in lisbon um, a neighborhood that is called mukambu it's a, it's a very it doesn't exist anymore it was dismantled um, around the years but in the in this 15th century 16th century 18th century there was a this, this huge area where black people, free people lived. And this area is uh, Mukambu, where you can find some commerce, some, some, um, some shops. There was a, a black economy that was placed also in this, in this area. And this was a form of resistance. Even the, the Brotherhood or this um, community-based uh, area was forms of resistance. The black people uh, get together, find spaces of freedom, of cultural manifestation, and also places where they can be together. They can, uh, we, can, we can also find um, the influence of black people in one of the most important cultural uh, um, aspects of Portugal, that is Fado. Fado, uh, the, the research uh, that is doing, that is being done now in Portugal, show us that Fado has its roots on, this, on some manifestations of black people. So these all were forms of resistance that people find that people that were enslaved find to to keep their culture to to have this their humanity manifested and to fight against oppression and against abuse that slavery was so i think uh, has a black person that lives in Portugal, I think that the legacy of these first forms of resistance, it's the legacy, it's part of our black movement. So I, I think we sh you should start uh, to analyze all this uh, history uh, from this perspective, from the, one of the things that I, I think it's very important for me uh, to, to think uh, the ways that we are uh, resisting oppression and, th and thinking racism li like a, a, a very hard form of oppression is to find this line that, that brings us from the present to the past. So uh, enslaved ones are on this line of resistance and they, 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 they modulate the, the way that we think of ourselves and they modulate the way that uh, the country was uh, was getting um constructed because they were they were very important in the in the wealth that that was bring uh, to portugal uh, all the monuments that we have in the city some of them remote to this time, to this period of time, so to remote to to, to slavery. So it's very important to talk about the resistance of the enslaved ones and the, the, the ways they 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 find to resist oppression. So I think this is the first period 
of our history that is very important to, to, to think about. So how did we start it? We started with this, with this um, encounter that was not very, um, very it, it was a very violent encounter, but it's, it's, uh, it's portrayed in Portugal like a benign one. So uh, we, in Portugal, uh, there's um, um, a centrality that is, that is put in uh, discoveries. So discoveries, it's the, um, it's the major event on cultural, in, in Portuguese culture that, is, um, that goes across all the areas and all the, the social uh, events, cultural events, political events, all the, the, the Id Portuguese identity is um, uh, based on the, the, this um, a celebration of discovery. So discoveries was the, 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 the process that, that led Portuguese to the African countries were the, that they occupied. So uh, another thing that is very important also, um, the, the countries that were occupied by Portugal were only independent in uh, 1974. Guinea-Bissau was independent in 1973, but all the, the, the others were independent in 1974. And Portugal had uh, an a imperial um, process, a colonial process, and also a, a fascist process. So we've lived in a dictatorial, uh, in a fascist dictature till uh, uh, 1974. So this is very important also for the organization of black people. So uh, bef uh, after this first phase, uh, I want to talk about uh, something that we find out recently uh, that it's very, very um, important and enthusiastic because when I was a little girl, I, I thought that black people uh, were enslaved and then were migrants that came after the independence. I didn't know that, were, that, that, that lived also in Portugal black people that had a different profession. Some of them, some of them were journalists, some of them were um, teachers of piano, uh, doctors, engineers, and they, some, most, most of them lived in Lisbon. They came from Li to Lisbon in a very early age uh, and they were uh, very organized and very political. Uh, this generation, it is being studied now by historians in, in, in Portugal, black historians that are very interested in this generation. It's called, it's the generation that, uh, that in between 1911 and 1933, they had uh, a lot of newspapers, they had organization, they had uh, political parties, and they were uh, in this uh, more international pan-Africanist movement. They had uh, connections with the um, with the boys, uh, they were influenced by Marcus Garvey, and they they were um, thinking and writing in journals about the um, the, the questions of uh, of racism in the United States, uh, also of racism in Brazil, and they 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 found it. Uh, a lot of newspapers, I'm going to say some of them names uh, of the newspapers. One of them was uh, Indigenous Protest, the other was the Voice of Africa, the other was Africa Tribune, and the organization was, uh, one of them was uh, um, joined for the defense of the rights of Africa, uh, Association of, uh, of Black Students that was founded in 19, um, 1911. Uh, African League that was founded in 1920, uh, Women's League uh, of uh, leagues of women, no League of Women uh, of Women of African Women that was founded in 1929, and uh, this one that I'm going to talk now is for, it was uh, directed by a woman that is called Georgina Ribas. Uh, it was called uh, Grêmio. I don't know how can can I translate in English, but it was a, a, an organization, um, a cultural organization that is called Grêmio Que Africana. Uh, this was directed by a woman and by an, uh, uh, many many others other women. We in this period also there were uh, black deputies 
one of the two black deputies was Jean de Castro e José de Magalhães. And there was a journalist that Mario, Mario Domingues that wrote a, a lot about uh, uh, against uh, colonialism, uh, wrote, wrote about the, the exploitation of black workers, uh, and there was all this all this movement uh, that was contesting colonialism, contesting racism. There were anti-racist movement, and uh, we didn't know about them. When I was studying uh, in school, uh, I never heard these names. And I didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't have a clue that these people existed. But it's very important now that we are digging history and finding that the black present it's very ancient, but it was also very organized in all periods of the Portuguese history. So it's it's um, it's very um, important for us. Um, and other other things that that was very uh, in this period, there were there were organizing the third uh, Pan African Congress uh, in Lisbon, but it didn't happen. It was to be in 1923, uh, but there were some some problems and they they didn't have. But there's a photo of this uh, period where we, when we ca where we can see. Uh, uh, José de Magalhães e João de Castro with uh, uh, W.E. Du Bois uh, in Lisbon. So this um, inscribes this movement in a whole international movement, in a pan-African movement, and all this networking they were doing in this period. Um, so then we go to the generation that I that I, 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 I like very much. It's very enthusiastic, this one, because we find this, um, these anti-colonial leaders that were the first uh, presidents of the independent nations after 74, studying in Lisbon uh, and, and uh, um, being in a, in a place that's called House for the Students of the, uh, students of the Empire that was, uh, that was created in between 1943, that was established in 1943, and it ended in 1965. Uh, in, this, in this Casa de Estudantes do Imperio, uh, in Portuguese, uh, Students uh, House, um, uh, Imperial Students House, they had meetings. They had uh, they had a lot of strategies for organizing the um, the, the fight against colonialism, and there they did. It was a place for political formation, and most of them were very. Um, they were. Um, they were formed in this context with other uh, students that came from the from the occupied uh, countries and had the, the similar situation. So in this period, we can find Agostinho Neto, that was the first uh, president of Angola. I, I didn't say the, the countries that were occupied by Portugal. It's very important because I don't know if if you are all aware of where, where the countries was Guinea-Bissau, Angola. Mozambique, Santo Mei Príncipe and Cabo Verde. My parents are from Guinea-Bissau. So uh, this is a, a history that is very prosh, very near to, to my history because my parents were, um, were, were growing up in a, in a colony. So uh, I'm the first generation of my family that didn't grow in a, in a, in a colony. So it's very important to, to know our history and to know how this organization shift the, the, the dialogue between the, the occupied countries and Portugal. So there were this, uh, this, this organ organizer, they were uh, recruiting uh, militants for the cause, for the, the, the independence cause. Uh, and they were also doing uh, political work in that contest. And they were, they were um, imagining the, the, the free countries, how this could, these free countries could be, how it was necessary, what, uh, what were the steps that were necessary, and they were articulated with other international movements that also there were in countries that were already independent because in, uh, the Portuguese, the countries that were occupied by Portugal uh, were, were independent later, so they had this influence from Ghana, from uh, um, 
Guinea Conakry, they were talking with Secuture, they were, they were talking with Nkrumah, and this, all this articulation was happening in this period. And some of the, the people that were in this, in this house of the, the students of the empire, uh, we, I already talked about Agostinho Neto, Amilcar Cabral, Mário Pinto de Andrade, Amélia Araújo, uh, Alda Espírito Santo. There are some of the names of the people there that are very uh, much influenced um, the liberation of the country, but also influenced our, our thoughts. So the, already... Oh. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I knew that we, we, this would happen. I knew. <laughs> so um, th in this period, there was a very, a very important, art uh, uh, based on this articulation, 60 of these students uh, get, uh, were able to, to flee from Portugal. Some of them were, uh, Amelia Araújo and the others went to the, to the, to the resistance, um, to the liberation, Amelia Araújo went to the liberation um, zones in Guinea-Bissau, where she organized the radio, the radio uh, Libertação, I think that was Radio Libertação, that was uh, passing information and message for the, for the liberation. So they, they, they were uh, able to, to, to do this while being in Portugal, being in the, in the empire, being part of the empire, but imagining another history for their countries. So uh, I must go very fast now. Uh, so, uh, after we have this generation that is always uh, taught in Portugal. So when we think when we think in Portugal uh, about black people, they always um, this, they, there is this idea that the presence began in the in the 70s. Uh, late 60s, 70s with migrants. So black people in Portugal are always associated with migrants. They are not Portuguese. Uh, and this, all this uh, colonial history is not um, it's not um, taught, it's not teached, and even in, it's not uh, it's not in the public space because the narrative that is that is put in the public space is the glorification of discovery. So colonialism was a good thing. Uh, Portuguese are very good and uh, relating to other countries. Uh, Portuguese colonization brought civilization to the people that were not civil, civil, civilized. They were not able to organize. They were not. They didn't have any agency. Uh, were unable to uh, to 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 be uh, to put in place uh, a struggle for liberation. So all this history is hidden. It's very important for us to to do all this path because migrants came from Portugal. Most of them came from the occupied country, and they they were there. There is a continuity of the idea of black people. So the migrants, they, when they came to Portugal, they faced racism, colonialism, uh, an imperial mind that put them in the same place that the indigenous one were, were in the, during the colonial period. So we can find a lot of continuities between the colonial period and post-colonial period in Portugal. Uh, some of these continuities is the nationality law, the, the migration laws and uh, the housing problems, um, the segregation of black people in the periphery of the big cities. Most of them were in, uh, in uh, very poor housing, in auto-constructed uh, neighborhoods. So in this, in this period of migrant people, they were facing with these problems of uh, jobs, uh, precarious jobs, exploitation, housing, schooling, regularization, and uh, they created a, a lot of um, organization associations to uh, to face these problems. First, uh, some of the, the the of the association that was created during this period had this nationality base because most of them came from Guinea. They created uh, Casa de Guinea, Guinea House. Some of them were from Cape, Cape Verde and created the Associação Cabo Verdeana, the Cape, Cape Verdean Association. Uh, there were some juvenile associations. And in this period also appeared uh, um, 
big association against racism, like SOS Racismo, SOS Racism, and also Olho Vivo. Um, uh, but these uh, very big association were not the, the 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 people that were directing this association were not black people. These two uh, that I told, SOS Racismo and Olho Vivo. The others were the association of um, community association, or uh, they were um, directed by black people. Uh, in one of the biggest auto-construct neighborhood in, in Portugal, that is in Amadora, it's called uh, Cova da Moura, has a big association that was found in this period that is called Moinho da Juventude, but even that association wasn't found by black uh, black person. So, but it was very important to tangle these questions of housing regulation, and it, it was able to organize uh, and associate black people. So I'm going very very fast to the to the present and now we are we are i think that we are a generation that is in the shoulders of the others that i told but our um, our demand is for more equality so we want to establish uh, blackness has a political uh, has a political um, dimension as a, a as a political subject so we want do we we are demanding uh, changes in the in the nationality law because in Portugal people that are born uh, uh, um, people that are born in Portugal they are only Portuguese if their parents are Portuguese so foreign uh, people from for, from foreign people from migrants they are not Portuguese they stay with the um, with the um, nationality of their parents so we must change that we had a big campaign in 2018 that was very important because it influenced uh, changes in the parliament uh, of the nationality law and when i was a, a deputy in the portuguese parliament this one was my first um, proposal the first proposal that i presented was changing in this nationality law we had a, a huge uh, fight for um, for data uh, for data uh, et ethnic ethnic data because in Portugal also we don't have information about uh, the the effect of uh, um, racial discrimination in housing in jobs in in wages and we wanted to know but we were defeated in this uh, in this um, demand. Uh, police violence. We had a lot of manifestations um, against police violence. Uh, we want to change the framework that the, about racism because it's um, a contra contra ordination. I don't know if you understand it. It's not a it's not a crime. It's um, you have. Um, a fee that you have to pay if you are condemned for racism. So we wanted to criminalize racism. It's very important to do this change. Uh, decolonization of uh, monuments, streets, history, uh, of um, the old, old mindset of Portugal. So we are very invested in this, in this demand because, as I say, we live in the denial of racism in Portugal. So we are uh, all Portuguese people uh, believe that we are not racist. We are. They, there is uh, uh, um, a right wing, no, um, a stream right party in Portugal that has that makes manifestation with banners saying that Portugal is not racist. So it's a very huge dispute. This one that we are doing, uh, and we are to fight. We are um, fighting for changes in the memory of the country in the history that is teach. So I have to end. I'm going to say some of the organizations, some feminist organizations that we have, Femafro, Immune, anti-racist organization, JUST, the organization that I founded in 2016. We have a very important, we presented a very important project for the construction of a memorial for the enslaved ones. And uh, uh, this is, this is a, uh, a way of changing, shift, shifting the, the history and the memory of the country and the city. And we are uh, mobilized in making articles, uh, open letters. Uh, there's a very, there, there was two 
very important, uh, sad and important events. Alcindo Monteiro was uh, brutally killed in 2000, uh, 1995 by skinheads in Lisbon, and there was huge manifestation. It, it, it was uh, celebrated 27 years um, yesterday. It was a, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very um, a shifting point because it was in the 10th of the June, that is the day of Portugal, in, in the, um, it was known during, during the colonial time as the day of the race, so this is a white supremacist uh, attitude, killing, uh, because it was an act of terrorism, a lot of black people were, um, were assaulted that day, and Alcindo Monteiro was assaulted in a very, very um, hard way, and, and he died two days later. And in 2020, uh, Bruno Candé was murdered by a, um, a white guy uh, that was in the colonial uh, army, he, he, he had guns from that period, and he, he was shooted in the street with uh, a lot of uh, um, bullets, and he died in a, in a, in a street in Lisbon, uh, Lisbon on Lourdes, um, in Muscavide, Mushka, in plain daylight. It was two o'clock when he was executed in the, in the street. So we are always bringing all this conversation, talking about the, the effects of racism, in, um, in, the, in a varied uh, dimensions of life. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I knew I, I couldn't do it in 20 minutes. Thank you for your patience. <laughs>